Behind me is the 2025 Cadillac CT4V Blackwing in coastal blue metallic paint, featuring a twin turbo V6 3.6 liter, putting out 472 horsepower and 445 pound feet of torque, mated to a six speed manual transmission. This is legitimately a unicorn, a last of its kind. Matter of fact, it is the last American manufactured sedan that comes with a manual transmission and an available V6. I'm Alex, your host, and join me for test drive Cadillac CT4V Blackwing. During this test drive, we set out to answer one question. With this being America's last stand, the last four-door V6 with a manual transmission, how does this offering of the Cadillac CT4V Blackwing measure up? Featuring a 3.6 liter twin turbocharged V6, this car is good for 472 horsepower and 445 pound-feet of torque. With the automatic transmission, that's good getting it from 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. Even though you do sacrifice a little bit for the manual with a 0 to 60 time of 4.1 seconds, it's a well worth experience like we had the chance to with test driving this manual edition of the CT4V Blackwing. One of the surprising things, at least for me, was that this vehicle's top speed is 189 miles an hour. That's eight miles an hour faster than the competition M4 that we test drove was, and is the fastest vehicle that we've driven on this channel. So this thing's a speed demon. I think one of the really cool things about both the CT4 and CT5V Blackwing is that the engines are assembled by a single technician in Lansing, Michigan. When the ATS-V ended in 2019, and Cadillac announced the CT4V Blackwing and all of its variants, it told us that this was going to be the last internal combustion engine powered V-series vehicle Cadillac produces. So this is really its final hurrah. This is as good as it gets. This is the peak of American horsepower and manual transmissions. So I know we've seen a little bit of a change in shift and tone in the past maybe nine months of 2024, but all I can hope is that that continues and that we continue to get maybe at least one or two more engines like this out of great car manufacturers like Cadillac. Every CT4V Blackwing comes with the option of either the 10-speed GM automatic that's widely used across their platform or an excellent six-speed manual. So one of the things I really like about the Blackwing is relatively how simple this center console is. Besides the manual shifter, you really only have three buttons down here, all of which are super useful. The first feature, rev matching. The second button, an easily accessible traction control, great for this vehicle. And then third, the buttons right here are to select between different driving modes. You essentially have three different driving modes and one custom mode. Going in aggressiveness, you have the least aggressive at touring, moving up to sport, and then ultimately track mode. Now, the different settings that are affected by those different modes are going to be your throttle mapping, the responsiveness of both your steering and brake feel, the loudness of the active exhaust, and then ultimately how soft or firm that magnetic dampening for the suspension is going to be on the vehicle. So the six-speed manual that's in this Blackwing is actually very unique because it features a few things that you don't necessarily think about when it goes to old-school manual transmissions. One of those, the feature of no lift shift, and it is exactly how it sounds. You keep your right foot pinned to the ground as you go ahead and shift. The Cadillac's power management system manages to cut off and have you right there so that you don't lose any of the torque during that shift. And along with available rev matching, it makes this a very expeditious shift as you go through the gears. Woo. It feels so wrong but it doesn't budge. No clutch smell, that's amazing. 
The manual transmission on this Blackwing is really an excellent setup. With all the technology that you get assisting you with the manual transmission, like the rev match, the different modes that control the throttle input, it's a really easy experience to drive. I'd say whether you're a beginner on stick or you're an advanced manual driver. The one thing I would say is that it feels a little rubbery shifting between the gates. It just doesn't have that satisfying click that tells you you're in. It just feels a little rubbery going from gear to gear. But nevertheless, with all the technology surrounding this manual transmission, the no lift shift technology, the different modes, the rev match, it absolutely is a great manual experience should you, and you should, choose the manual transmission. One of the features that didn't come on this car, but is available on other Black Wings for $1,600 option, is Cadillac's Performance Data Recorder. And essentially what that is, is a built-in system that captures real-time driving metrics, like speed, g-force, throttle input, and will even record lap times. It also integrates four different high definition video cameras and will take that video footage and allow you to watch it back, which theoretically allows drivers to review their track performance and driving habits and improve upon lap times, should you be one of the few that take your Cadillac to the track. Stopping power on the Blackwing is powered up front by massive 15 inch vented rotors with 13.4 inches in the rear. When you stomp on the brakes, this thing's gonna stop. This Blackwing features Cadillac's fourth generation of magnetic ride control and it leads to a really smooth, consistent ride. The vehicle will actually read the road every millisecond or essentially a thousand times per second and can make adjustments to the ride in less than five milliseconds. So what that leads to is a really smooth, consistent ride. And of course, you can adjust that to your own liking using these mode buttons right here or of course, adjusting the custom mode Mode setting to your liking. Watching this video back while editing it, admittedly, I was surprised by how rough the ride sometimes looks on video. During the test drive, generally I kept the Blackwing's magnetic suspension in its stiffest setting almost the whole time. And despite how it looks, it really didn't feel rough at all while driving the Cadillac, but I couldn't not acknowledge how much it looks like I'm bouncing around. Nevertheless, and I'm not trying to glaze the Cadillac here, but the ride was completely pleasant versus something like the M4 Competition that had a very rough ride. At only 3,759 pounds, this is a pretty light on its feet sedan for 2025. And that weight's actually a massive advantage as it's almost 400 pounds lighter than its V8 powered older sibling, the CT5B Blackwing. So this is probably the most nimble of Cadillacs that you're gonna get, even though it comes in four door form. I think the exhaust on the Black Wing for a forced induction V6 setup sounds pretty good. It's got a good growl to it rather than a loud whine. In its sportiest setting, you can hear that the fuel injectors, when you are going down RPM, will actually drop a few drops of fuel in there, giving you that popping experience that you hear quite often. Let's see if we can get the pop. It's kind of fun, a little bit gimmicky, but it does it well. I think the best thing that we have going for us, at least with the sound of this exhaust, is the fact that we haven't had the chance to test drive the CT5 V Blackwing, the supercharged V8 older brother of this car. What are your thoughts? What do you all think about the sound of this exhaust? Is it a little too canned, or is it a pretty decent job by Cadillac, given that it's a twin turbo V6 engine? One thing I love to point out here, there is no artificial noise piped inside the Blackwing. Cadillac focused on delivering an authentic sport driving experience for enthusiasts with the Blackwing, so everything you hear is part of the real exhaust notes with no enhanced or artificial sounds coming out of the speakers. 
Not surprising for a brand like Cadillac, this Blackwing has a really kick-ass audio system. Featuring a 15-speaker AKG audio system within the vehicle, absolutely kicks ass if that's what you want to listen to instead of the exhaust. Wouldn't blame you. It's a great sound system. The interior of the Cadillac, even in this base form, there are some options that you could have chosen that spice up the interior. But in this base form of carbon fiber and black on black interior, I think it looks really clean. You do have this cool little red stripe in the middle of the steering wheel. But it's a very clean, I think timeless interior that's not too gimmicky. We definitely give extra credit for having manual buttons that are easy to operate. When you come inside the vehicle and actually take a look at what screens are facing the driver, you may be a little surprised that it's only a seven inch infotainment screen sitting right in the middle of the dash. And I say only because in today's day and age, you mostly see gigantic iPad looking screens thrown across vehicles. And even though this is on the smaller side, it's really easy to navigate and probably appropriately sized for this vehicle. The bigger of the two screens actually is the driver information section right in front of your face. That is a 12 inch gauge cluster, highly customizable. It's got a really cool feature. When you do put it into V mode, it will kind of do a little show and bring upon you the race screen that'll, that's customizable and shows you everything that you would wanna know on a track. As far as comfort goes, I've got to say, this is a really comfortable ride. Maybe the best one that we've driven so far in this test drive series of videos. The interior is known for being a little cramped, a little small. That was a criticism of the ATS as well, especially for folks in the back. I really don't know why they have the two doors back there. They might as well have kept this a coupe because it's a tight seating experience back there. But at least for one person in a four-door car, it's a pretty good fit and the seats are definitely not torture devices. They hold you in well, but it's no excessive pinching or anything like that that wears you out as time goes on. I think as far as design goes, the CT4V Blackwing really nailed it. It's got a lot of sharp angles that really look grandeur coming down the street, very Cadillac. And I think the manufacturers really nailed the styling at a time where people were still trying to figure themselves out. Just take a look at the BMW M4. Surprisingly, the CT4V Blackwing only comes with available 18-inch rims. They look pretty good, but that's pretty small for most cars nowadays that you'll see anything from 20s to 22s on standard sedans. But despite having 18-inch rims, the tires are pretty meaty. Up front, you have 255s, and out back, 275s that provide a ton of grip that you absolutely need with the 445 pound-feet of torque through rear wheel drive. A lot of you are probably familiar with the predecessor to the CT4V Blackwing, the Cadillac ATS-V. They are very similar, but not quite related. The 3.6 liter twin turbocharged engine from the ATS-V did come over into this Cadillac, but it's plus seven horsepower. Now one noticeable difference minus the better name the ATS-V had over this CT4V, well, it's only available in sedan form now where the ATS-V came in either coupe or sedan. Let's talk the CT4 lineup. At the very bottom is called just the CT4. That features a two liter four cylinder turbo that is a very base offering. The next level up, the CT4V offers a 2.7 liter four cylinder that is turbocharged and has a pretty decent amount of torque. You're talking 325 horsepower, 380 pound feet of torque. But of course the real offering is this vehicle right here, the CT4V. Blackwing. And of course, that Blackwing denotes that it is the top trim, at least in recent years, featuring the 3.6 liter twin turbo, 472 horsepower, and 445 pound feet of torque. And while the CT4V is a very decent offering, especially, and it always has been, especially with that 380 pound feet of torque, it is at 48,995, while this Blackwing starts at just over 13 grand more, around 62 and a half. So if you can somehow come up with that money under your couch or at a bank, I advise that you definitely go for the black wing because this is just a, again, unicorn. It's the last of its experience. There is no other manual built American sedan other than the CT4V black wing and the CT5V black wing. 
One of the things that there's a healthy debate on, at least with this Cadillac, is exactly what segment does it belong in. Rightfully so, there are a lot of people that want to put this up directly with the M3. And I get it, four door manual transmission, they're very much in the same on paper. But when you actually look at the lineup and look at the power and prices, I think this Cadillac actually fits better with the BMW M2, the Audi RS3, the Mercedes C43 AMG. When you look at it, there's just a narrow gap between prices, between all of them. And while this is still the most power out of those vehicles, they're all still relatively within each other's segment. Whereas if you look at the RS5, RS6, CT5V Blackwing, this thing's older brother, they compete a little bit better on paper with the BMW M4 and M3 competition, of which we of course test drove to start this channel. I advise you taking a look at that video. Plus, I have a hard time drawing direct comparisons between this and the M4 that we drove, which is of course very similar to the M3 in all but two doors. This is so much more refined than the M4 competition was. The M4 competition hurt to drive, and it was a hurt that hurt so good. This Cadillac is truly a Cadillac experience. It's refined. There is so much more comfort in the seats and the ride. You still have that poppy engine, but it's nothing like what the M4 competition had. So what are some of the highlights of the CT4V Blackwing? Well, for starters, Without a doubt, in my mind, it's the twin turbo V6 that powers this. It's a manual transmission coupled with a 472 horsepower V6. It's literally the best that worlds get is right here. I always say the good old days are today, and this is evidence of that. Another positive, in my opinion, is the styling. I think a lot of cars now are trying to find their footing between smooth lines and big and boxy bold styling well cadillac actually managed to nail it i think with this styling this beautiful cadillac came in coastal blue metallic a color that really i've got to say is attracting a lot of attention as we drive around i think i've gotten more attention and more head nods in this car than i actually did the ferrari california maybe it's a difference of this being a little bit more new this being a little bit more exciting but it was a little surprising how much love this vehicle got. Another really positive feature, I think, of the Blackwing is how it uses technology not for your entertainment, but to enhance your driving experience. Take, for example, the manual transmission, a naturally manual process of driving a car. How did Cadillac utilize technology to make it better? Well, think about the no lift shift. You literally don't have to remove your foot off the gas anymore to shift in a manual transmission. The active rev matching, the different enhancements, the driving modes put into this vehicle. I love the fact that they utilize technology not just to entertain you, but to actually make the driving experience of this Cadillac better and more engaging. And they absolutely accomplish that. And a final positive, has to be that this is a unicorn. This is literally a one-of-a-kind car at this point. America doesn't make another sedan with a V6 that comes with a manual transmission. As a matter of fact, the only other manual transmission sedan manufactured in America is this thing's older brother, the CT5V Black Wing. So you're staring at a unicorn, a one-of-a-kind, a last of its kind, and it is truly a last stand for American horsepower, with this being the last internal combustion engine powered V car. So what are some of the negatives with the CT4 V Blackwing? One of the negatives this particular vehicle has had in its lifetime, and even its predecessor, the ATS platform shared it, it's very tight on space. One person in a four-door car, plenty of room. But if you force any of your friends into that back seat, it's a tight experience. This thing might as well only have two doors because those other two in the back are really not opening up to much space. It's a tight fit. Another one of the negatives has been the actual feel going between the gates of the manual shifter. Don't get me wrong, this is a phenomenal manual driving experience. It really is. It's very easy whether I think you're a new to a stick or an advanced driver of manual, but the actual going in between the gates has a very rubbery feel. No real satisfying click. Another potential negative, and just one that I really don't get, is the lack of all-wheel drive. There is a lot of power and a lot of torque in this vehicle, and it's only rear-wheel drive. I enjoy the hell out of that, but if you're in more of a snowy or icy type environment, 
this is going to be a lot of power for that. And all-wheel drive is even available on the lower trims, the CT4 and the CT4V. So it just seems like that could have been a nice option. But again, that's a very small complaint. You have a badass rear-wheel drive tire burner car here. Another potential negative, and this just shows you how hard I'm trying to find negatives, is the naming convention behind the CT4V Blackwing. Again, that's a mouthful. What was wrong with the ATS-V? That rolled off the tongue and was badass. The same thing goes for the CTS-V and how you've named that now the CT5V Blackwing. Just seems like you nailed it the first time, you didn't have to change it. But again, when you're nitpicking at the name, you know you're trying to find some negative, and this car doesn't have very many of them. And now to answer the question we started with, with this car being America's last stand, its last hope, with manual transmissions and a V6 engine made in America, how did the Cadillac CT4 Blackwing measure up? Well, no surprise to you if you've watched the video, it measures up fantastically. I don't care whether this is a manual or automatic only car, this is a phenomenal driving experience all around, especially coming from a little bit of a different angle than your European sedans do. So all in all, I think this is a phenomenal car. And if you are looking at the CT4 and you're right there between the CT4 V and Blackwing, Go ahead, if you have the extra dollars, and spend it on the Blackwing. You're not going to regret it. So I'd love to know your thoughts. What do you think of the CT4V Blackwing? What did I get right? What do you think I got wrong? What are some of the features that you enjoyed of this? And ultimately, where do you think it fits in the competition? Is this a BMW M3 killer? Or does it belong a little bit more in the segment of M2s, Mercedes C43 AMGs, and Audi RS3s? Let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching Test Drive Cadillac CT4V Blackwing. Still a mouthful all the way till the end. This is the fifth in our Test Drive series of videos. Our whole goal in the Test Drive series of videos on this channel is to get our hands on internal combustion engines like this one that make you feel as an auto enthusiast. Because face it, as automakers move towards more EVs and electrification, there are going to be less and less twin turbo V6s like this on the road every day. Matter of fact, Cadillac already told us when this debuted, this would be the last internal combustion engine powered V series car produced by Cadillac. So it's already a unicorn. It's already one of a kind. Whether this is your first or the fifth in the test drive series of videos that you've seen, I just want to say we appreciate the hell out of you. If you enjoy these videos and enjoy what we're doing, it would mean the world to me if you hit the like button there or left a comment. If you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe because we're going to be trying to get our hands on as many of these type vehicles as we can while they're around. So I just want to take a moment and say thank you for allowing me to spend time doing this and spending your time watching these videos. It's not lost on me the value of your time and the fact that you're spending these watching these videos means the world to me. If you made it to the end of the video, just know we appreciate the hell out of you. I'm Alex, your host, and I'll see you on the next test drive.